draw with me. I'm Danny Gregory in this sort of medieval mode this morning. But uh, thanks so much for joining me here in the present in the 21st century uh, where we have our own, uh, our own plague to deal with. So I wanted to say hello to a lot of people who are showing up. It's nice. Uh, Margaret and Debbie and Thistle, hello, and Lenore and Lisa Wrinkle Bell, Timmy Carpides, Christina Andrews, Krista Stewart, and uh, many others. It's so nice to uh, see you here. Morgan, hopefully you're here too. Morgan had her birthday this week, a couple days ago. And um, she is, well, she's the same but slightly older. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about a thing that was on my mind a bit recently, which is gratitude. I think it's very easy right now to be kind of inundated with bleak thoughts, complaints, fears, anxieties, um, and to allow those to really kind of define how we're seeing the world right now. And there's certainly ample reasons for that. I mean, there's no question that that we have a lot of things to complain about. But I think a thing that we might overlook as we're overwhelmed by these things is what we're lucky to have. And I don't mean this in a Pollyanna way. I don't mean like, gee willikers, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. I don't mean that, really. I mean that there's an actual benefit to us, to appreciating beauty, appreciating the things that are still fortunate in our lives. And, you know, this is something I need to remind myself of. That's why I'm talking to you about it, not to tell you that you need to do it necessarily, but to remind myself of how important it is to acknowledge the things that I'm thankful for. Um, and so that's what I wanted to focus on today. This is at least the things that I wanted to draw in my sketchbook because my sketchbook has for almost 25 years been a place where I can celebrate the positive things in my life. Um, from the very, very beginning, when I first started to draw, um, I found that uh, stopping to look at what's around me, to look at the things that I have to, to be grateful for, and contemplating them through drawing uh, was an essential part of my kind of recovery from trauma, from my rebuilding my resilience. And so I find that I need to go back and do this sometimes. And the simplest way of doing that is to simply, you know, while you're lying in bed waiting to go to sleep, think to yourself, like, what were the highlights of my day? What were the good things that happened? Um, but drawing takes it a step further, because with drawing, you're tapping into another part of your brain, uh, the subconscious, the, I think, the true you, which lies underneath the, the ego that is always clamoring for attention and uh, the monkey that is always looking for problems. This deeper part of us that, that when we get into the creative flow, we are tapped into. So I hope that that's something that you maybe think about, but maybe don't think about. And if you don't think about it, I would ask for us to try this today. Now, I think particularly because we're on the internet, and the internet is a place that is, um, you know, relatively s s cynical, skeptical, uh, that it, things can appear mawkish and um, cheesy if you focus on this sort of thing, you know, 
make it seem like you are trying to be uh, you know, uh, up with people kind of mode that isn't really the way that we look at the world these days. It's certainly not the way I generally look at the world either. But I think that there's really good reasons to use it um, to use this as a place for us to to have this communal experience, nonetheless. So, despite the fact that maybe on Twitter or Reddit or some other platform this might not be appropriate, but here on YouTube, here on Facebook, let us be grateful. Okay. Um, to begin, I would say. Let's each make a list, a few words um, of the thoughts that uh, occur to us when I ask you this. And it doesn't have to be the obvious ones necessarily. Like for me, I'm obviously, I'm grateful for my wife, Jenny. I'm grateful for being with her. I'm grateful for all the things that she does to make me happy. Um, so I could always do put her in my gratitude journal. I'm not going to today. Sorry, Jenny. Um, I could be grateful for being healthy. You know, I've, I've, uh, there's so many people who are suffering so much right now, and, and I've, I've been, I've, so far, have avoided uh, the pandemic's effects on my health. So I'm grateful for that, but I'm grateful for that every day. Um, I want to talk about things that are a bit more I don't know, specific and fleeting, perhaps. Like a moment of wonder for today. A moment of um, you know, things that are that are beautiful today, right now. Um, so, I think one of the first things I'm going to draw is... Sorry, this is just in. Mic sounds in a deep cave. I know. All right. Well, I, I'm going to turn up my mic a little bit just so you can hear me a little bit better. Unfortunately, we have the, the weekly visitation. I mean, this business with the lawn blowers and the leaf blowers has become so problematic now that I'm uh, I'm not grateful for them. So it's possible I might have to like I don't know go somewhere completely different to do this or something. Anyway, I apologize. I, I'm getting off track. I wanted to focus on what is, what I'm grateful for. So, to flush this out, to flush the, the sort of momentary um, burst of adrenaline that comes with feeling stressed and, and, and uptight about a little momentary thing. It's a physical thing. You know, this is a physical thing that, that comes to us. Um, so anyway, one of the things I was thinking that I would want to draw is a dragonfly. We've had a lot of dragonflies here in the last week. Dragonflies are just beautiful insects. They're, they are um, graceful. They're kind of magical the way that they move. They're a sign of summer. They are my mother-in-law's favorite insects. She always feels like they have some magical feeling. So magical aspect to them. So I think I'm going to start by drawing a dragonfly. Um, and then I have four or five other things that I want to get to that I want to draw. So let's move over to uh, this point, point of view. Um, which is my... So earlier today I made this little uh, square. I haven't quite finished it. I'm just using a marker to just make a square because I just wanted to kind of wanted to design my page a little bit. I didn't want to just randomly draw a bunch of things on it. I wanted to make a little bit of a design for it. So uh, I'm going to try and draw a dragonfly based on a bit of a recollection of what they look like. Um, oh yes, it's true, and they do. They eat mosquitoes, which is another. I mean, we've been really attacked by mosquitoes uh, in the last few days. I'm not sure what is up with them. I guess it's summer and I guess they're doing their job. But I'm not grateful for mosquitoes, but I am grateful for today for these dragonflies. Um, 
Yeah, they have two sets of wings like that. And then they have this, this little segmented body. I actually had a giant dragonfly once that I found. I think we found it in our apartment, which was very weird. But yeah, we had this giant dragonfly, a dead dragonfly that just somehow magically landed in our apartment one day. In Manhattan, of all places, which seems like a very weird thing for a dragonfly to do. That's the general idea, right, behind a dragonfly. It's it's basically a stick with wings. Um, but yeah, there's probably I'm sure there's all kinds of ornamentation and stuff like that. There's probably legs. These, these wings are just beautiful and translucent. So I kind of want to preserve a bit of that, preserve some of the uh, things. But obviously, you don't have to draw dragonflies. You could be drawing um, the grilled cheese sandwich you had yesterday. You could be drawing. Neighbors, Pekingese dog, and barks melodiously. Um, what is it that you are feeling grateful for? That reminds me, I wanted to play this for you, actually. I was listening to a podcast um, that is called... The happiness. Incredible. Happiness. People who count their blessings show 23% lower levels of stress hormones like cortisol. They reduce their dietary fat intake by as much as 25%. People suffering from chronic pain show a 10% improvement in sleep quality and depression levels that are 19% lower. Science shows that gratitude also increases our resilience. In contrast to griping, Focusing on the good things in life seems to be a strategy that allows you to take action in order to fix the bad things. We know from the studies that, that gratitude helps us recover from loss and trauma. It helps us to deal with the slow drip of everyday stress as well as the massive you know, personal upheavals in the face of suffering and pain and loss and trials and tribulations. Gratitude is absolutely essential. It's part of our psychological immune system. It's interesting, right? It's so, so th those are two psychologists um, who have studied both happiness and gratitude specifically. And they say that there are actual physical changes that happen to your body when you are grateful. It wasn't a commercial to Stephanie. It was me playing a little piece from a podcast called The Happiness Lab. It's a nice podcast. I would recommend that you check it out if you are so inclined. The Happiness Lab. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that guy. He's looking, uh, he's looking pretty good, though. I like the fact that you can sort of see the yellow through him, but you can also see that it's not, that it's translucent, so I'm going to keep it that way. Um, all right, so another thing that I was thinking about Ah, yes. Here we go. These are my new glasses. I just got them. And uh, they're pretty intense. Pretty intense. They are um, slightly higher, stronger prescription than I've had in the past. But, you know, as you get older, these things happen. So... I'm, I am grateful for them. I'm, I'm grateful that, they, that I was able to get them in the middle of the pandemic. I only got them because uh, I had my driver's license was about to expire and I had to get a new eye test. So I got these new glasses and yes, they're stronger. So that is get, taking some getting used to because I have like almost bionic vision now. I can sort of see through the cells in my hand. This is amazing. I can see. The, I, can real, I realize how poorly I've been seeing all this time. Um, so I think I'm grateful for them. I think I'm going to draw them, but I have to take them off to draw them and put on my other ones. So yeah, so I think that's what I'm going to draw next, is I'm going to draw these glasses. Um, they are 
going to change my life in some way. But right now I'm at that stage. I don't know if you wear glasses, but when you first get new ones, it's like, whoa, they're, they're, everything not only looks different, but it's also like my eye, my poor eyes are sort of like wondering what the hell happened and are struggling a bit to adjust when I take them off. You know, like, went, wow, that was very intense. It was like eating some sort of intense jalapeno or something. So yeah, so what is your next drawing going to be of? What are you thinking? Are you thinking about gratitude? You know, I, I do find that it's calming to do this sort of thing. Calming reassuring and I think it's also the spirit with which you do it I mean I can look at these glasses I can think okay they're a reminder of my ever advancing years uh, I could look at them as a pain, because they were, it was a bit of a pain, frankly, to get these in, in, under these conditions that we're living in. Um, you know, I can look at them as, you know, just one more, one more thing to deal with, one more, oh, uh, where are my glasses, that kind of thing. And, you know, that's certainly a temptation, a tendency, but I think we can also look at them, or I can look at them and say, yeah, but like, this is a good thing, like, I, I'm realizing, like, actually, these are a benefit to my life, I can just try and sort of walk away from those negative thoughts that I can associate with these glasses, and instead just try and focus on the positive ones, be grateful to them for being here. And it, it, it's difficult to talk about this stuff, right? It's, I mean, for me, it is. I was not raised. I was raised by my mother, who said to me once, we were talking about happiness, and she, my mother is very um, sure about certain things. And, and one thing she said was, you know, happiness is overrated, <laughs> which is wonderful favorite things that she said. In fact, uh, I may have that carved on her tombstone when the time comes. So yeah, so I didn't grow up with a natural inclination towards joy and celebration of life's little things. But I did find that when I needed to, like, I, I really needed that in my life, that it naturally came about. That I realized that focusing on the fear and anxiety did not serve me nearly as well is trying to see the glass half full. So. Not sure how fiddly I want to get with this drawing, but I'll probably come back to it. This, these are the kind of drawings that I like to, um, you know, just come back and think about some more, work on some more, because I find that in the doing, it's sort of enhancing this flow of gratitude. This is a thing that I, in fact, on that podcast, the Happiness Lab, she talks about this thing which I have never done, and maybe, maybe it'd be of interest to you. It just seemed a bit much to me, which is to write gratitude letters Take something in your life and you say, I'm going to tell, I'm going to write what I feel about them and what they mean to me in my life. And ideally, you're going to send that to somebody. Now, what they claim, those two scientists who did this study, was that the effect of doing that on the person who does them, the person who writes a letter, it doesn't have to be a long letter, but the person who writes that letter 
their metrics for happiness, safety, uh, perspective, confidence, all those kinds of things can last for up to a month from that one single act. So, maybe it's worth doing. I don't know. Maybe I'll write to my mother and thank her for the role that she's had in my life. But maybe not. All right. Um, now let's try something else. Here's another thing I was thinking about. This is going to take a, little, a moment or two, so I'm going to do it in two stages, which is one thing that being here in Arizona uh, is the... This Arizona is a place where people from all over the world come and look at the stars. There are more observatories here, I think, than just about any other part of the world. It just, it's just... Um, just, maybe it's the desert. I don't know what it is, but but for some reason, the night sky here is really spectacular. And my brother-in-law Rick runs um, a planetarium at ASU Arizona State University, which is here in Phoenix. And I, I've been just learning a lot about the night sky from him. In fact, he's been working with him on a little sh uh, live video streaming show that he's been doing. Uh, he did it last night, in fact, about, about the night sky, and he points out things that are going on right now. So I've learned quite a lot about it. So I think what I'm going to do is I painted this little rectangle here that's going to represent the night sky, and I'm going to just, just write in something, just make some stars once that dries. So we'll see how I'm going to do that. Not quite sure yet, but we'll see. Um, what else do I want to focus on? My composition is kind of thrown off a bit now. No, Holly, there's no reference photo. We are drawing things that we are grateful for. So I'm assuming you're not going to draw the same things that I'm drawing. I assume you're not grateful for my glasses. <laughs> But, um, yeah, whatever it is that you're grateful for, that's what we're going to draw, and draw it in any way you want to. So don't follow my lead, follow your own. I was kind of thinking that, um, that I might draw my sister. My sister is... Back on the other side of the country, she is uh, she's doing okay, but she has her own struggles, and um, I don't think I've ever drawn her before. So, but my sister's one of those people who, when there's a camera out, she'll always say, "Oh, uh, don't, don't 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 take my picture right now." So I don't really have many pictures of her to draw from, so I'm just gonna have to kind of wing it. Come up with some version of her, own, of her on my own from memory. Hopefully, she's not watching, so I can get away with this. <laughs> my sister's name is Miranda. Miranda is Spanish, although she's not in any way Spanish, but Miranda means beautiful to behold. thing about my sister is she has amazing hair. Lots of it. So obviously, we didn't inherit that from each other. Or I didn't. Well, I, I'm older than her, so she didn't inherit that from me. But uh, yeah, she has, she has lots of hair, so I'm going to sort of indicate that. This is a drawing that, for me, is, it's not, it's not for her. It's not for her to see, necessarily, not for her to even know about, but it is, it is for me, a, a reminder of how I see her. 
Um, my sister's a very kind person and uh, works in the service of other people most of the time. So, um, I just want to acknowledge that to myself. She's always been really supportive of me, really helpful to me. And uh, yeah, I try to talk to her every week or so. When I do talk to her, I feel like I can talk to her for a really long time. We have just a fair amount in common. But in many ways, we're like totally, totally different. So, she wears glasses too. I don't know exactly what her glasses look like, but. Yeah, so. When I think of my sister, I think of her hair. I think of her nose. She has sort of a largish nose, but it's a very strong kind of statement in her face. And uh, her hair is really good and wild. So. So yeah, so anybody who knows her, don't tell her that I drew her. I want to maintain my relationship with her, so if she thinks I'm going around drawing her, she'd say, what are you doing? Um, okay, so there's that, and then what else do I want to draw? I was thinking, uh, another thing that I'm grateful for these days is um, a car that we call the barge. Called the, it's, it's a... Uh, it's like 10 or 12 years old now, it is um, a Mercury Grand Marquis that we inherited from my mother-in-law, who is now in assisted living, and said she doesn't need it anymore, so we, we are free to use it while we're here. And uh, it's a giant car, huge, huge car that is, you know, it's not in great shape, although we we fixed it up, so it's really pretty good shape now. But the barge has a giant V8 engine. It uh, is really powerful. It's basically a, a police car. It's like the, that design of what, like, what a police car would be. And um, we sort of like it. It's like, it's a very, it's a very unpretentious car. It's the kind of car that an 89-year-old woman would drive, and my mother-in-law is exactly that. So that's the barge. That's going to represent the barge. I'm going to hit it up a little. Sort of. Yeah, so the barge, I'm de we're definitely grateful for that all the time. It's, unless we'd have to go out and buy a car, which we're not ready to do yet. We're not fully committed to non-New York living. In New York, of course, cars are just a foolish waste for those of us who live in Manhattan. But that's the barge. So I'm going to come back and do some work on the barge in a little bit. Now, meantime, let's work on my night sky. And uh, yes, so Cynthia knows it. Yes. Yeah, ours is sort of silver gray. So one thing that I've discovered about the night sky here is it's endless. And then there's things like Venus that are really huge. Of course, there's, there's the moon that's waning right now. And there's all these constellations that are, I don't know, I've never been, I've always been fascinated by the sky, but I can never identify where things are or what they are. But my brother in law is amazing at that. He tells these stories about the history of how people have viewed 
planets and you know, certain things are going to come into view. It's just so many things about looking at the night sky that are interesting, given our current circumstances. On one hand, they make you feel small and insignificant, and the, all the troubles we have don't amount to a hill of beans kind of thing, but also just the amazing infinity of it all, just the fact that it goes on forever. And I don't know, that just helps me to get perspective on it, so instead of being dwarfed by it, or maybe I am dwarfed by it, but instead of feeling like I mean nothing, I feel connected somehow. Some grateful tip for that. Um, and then, there's another thing that I will say that I'm grateful for is this. This thing that I just made these white dots with. It is my new Presto Jumbo Correction Pen. So this thing is like, it's white paint, essentially. It's nice and opaque. You can actually add color on top of it. And it comes out in this little nib. So I think I'm going to draw my Presto Pen. I think I like the idea that uh, my Presto Pen deserves to be in the same continuum as the universe. Yeah, I'm really grateful for this for this pen because there's so many times when just need a good, solid, opaque white. I mean, yes, for corrections, I don't have a reason for that, because I never make mistakes, but theoretically, if I were to, this would be the way to deal with them. But it's, it's more really for just adding some white when you want it, putting a bit of highlight in an eye. Um, particularly in conjunction with this, which is my shirt. This is my uh, Pentel brush pen. Hey, also Pentel, I didn't even realize that. This is my Pentel brush pen, which is which is a thing I've been using a lot recently. And it's really nice to be able to add a bit of white after you've done some pentel -ing. It's nice to, to do this kind of gratitude journaling periodically in your sketchbook, you know, because it's so nice to look back on. It's so nice to be able to look back and go, oh yeah, I, I've forgotten about that thing, or, or that's interesting how much that meant to me now, it doesn't mean the same to me now, or it means even more, or now I see it differently, or whatever it is, it's just a way of getting this insight into yourself. Consider that as a, as a nice kind of discipline to have. Do you see your sketchbook as a journal? Do you see it as just a place to draw? You know, for me, it's it's mu much more important to actually record the stuff that's going on and to have a place to do it. And I love to use drawing for that. So this is to kill two birds with one stone, as it were. That, uh, you get to draw, and you get to contemplate your place in the world at the same time.
Okay, so now what I like to do after I've done these drawings is I like to just just add some words to it. Um, so It doesn't have to be a terribly profound thing that you write. You know, it's just a reminder of what you were writing. What you were thinking of so that the drawing takes on. feel an accident waiting to happen. As I smear my ink, but I'll go with it.
All right. So there you have it. Today's things of gratitude. Um. Yeah, that was that was an interesting experience. I hope you had a good one too. This is the kind of page that it's nice to come back and noodle a lot with, you know? To come back with other art supplies and just keep adding stuff to Because you don't necessarily need, even need to do the drawing to just kind of revisit the feeling, you know. Say, okay. I can just feel my feeling about this car again by just kind of retracing stuff. come back to this years from now and I could just do a little bit of work on these same drawings and reanimate that feeling that I got of feeling thankful for my life. <sighs> I felt good. I hope you felt good after doing yours too. I had a long list of other things that I could be grateful for. Maybe I'll get to those later today, or maybe next time I just feel in that mood, you know, that kind of like, ugh, icky, the everything, dark clouds, Eeyore, you know, Charlie Brown with a rain cloud over his head kind of feeling, and you can just say, no, let me just try and change the channel. Um, you know, I think that that is, that to me is the, the joy of, jour of journaling, the joy of drawing, making art, just sitting down with yourself and just saying, um, you know, let's let's be here now. Let's be in this moment. Because because so often the things that make us most miserable are things that haven't happened. Right? You sit around prognosticating, theorizing about what will be. What if? This could happen, that could happen. But when you draw something, you're very much in the moment. You might, you could, of course, draw what would be. You could do a drawing filled with dread. I mean, that's been done many times. But you can also, I think, by being in the moment, by, by being present with your art supplies and your piece of paper, you can also choose to be here now and to say you know what I'm alive this is fine I have the time to do this I'm lucky in so many ways um, you know let's let's focus on that and even if just for a minute and as I told you those these researchers have said that these experiences of kind of focusing on on thankfulness can have effects chemical effects in your brain, um, in your body, that can last for up to a month. So if you do it all the time, you're covered. I wonder if, uh, if I can get my health insurance to cover my art supplies. Worth trying. Um, so yes, this has been uh, my meditation for today. What else? I'm grateful for uh, this weekend. We're going to be doing a fun workshop with Natalie Kalbach. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Uh, on Sunday, we are driving to Los Angeles to stay in somebody else's house. We're going to be quarantined, quarantined, sequestered, removed, socially distanced, but in a different place than here. It's just going to be the two of us there instead of the two of us here, but we'll be a different place and, and a place that isn't 111 degrees every day damn day. It's fine. I like it. I like to eat. But it'll be nice to be in a different place and see what that's like. So uh, it's possible that I'll be doing Draw With Me from LA next week. And then we'll be coming back here. Um, but yeah, that's possible. 
it's my son's birthday, and we'll be celebrating that too. So Morgan's birthday this week, Jack's birthday coming up, then Jenny's birthday, my mother-in-law, Marge, who gave us the barge and who loves dragonflies. It's her birthday. And uh, then eventually my birthday. Yeah, it's, my, it's a big birthday, a birthday that ends in a zero. Anyway, thanks so much for being here with me today. Thanks for drawing with me. Um, if you would like to share what you've done uh, on social media, you can do... Well, I'm going to share this hashtag, draw with me. There's been some discussion about whether it should be SBS draw with me. But for now, this week, let's do, do draw with me. And um, share it. If you want to share what you're grateful for, that would be nice. Um, or, of course, share it on the schoolyard. And uh, I have a lot of things to be grateful for, and there are more of them coming up. There are more exciting things coming up at Sketchbook School that you'll be hearing about soonish. Um, and that's all very nice, too. So thanks for being here with me today. Thanks for drawing with me. And I will see you again next week. Same bat station, same bat time, noon on Thursday, noon Eastern time. Even though I'll be Western time. It'll be 9 a.m. there. Well, it's 9 a.m. here, too. But it'll be noon in Draw With Me land. So let's not get confused. Noon Eastern time. See you then.